Circle the calendars, August 12th, Glendale, Arizona. We're talking about a, a pair of real ones getting together. That man right there, Oscar Valdez, and of course the 130-pound champion, WBO, Emmanuel Navarrete. A duel in the desert, and Oscar, I don't want to I want to put any pressure on you. But the fans have been talking about this fight since the moment it got sniffed out, and fight of the year has followed it into August 12th. Uh, you down with that? I'm down with that. I'm down with that. I, you know, it's, uh, it was very unfortunate at first. You know, when when uh, you know, the fight was scheduled, and then I had my rib, my rib broken injury, and, and you know, being there when he when he became a champion, you know, I, I, a lot of emotions going through my mind because I kept on telling myself, man, that should have been me inside that ring. You know, this and that. I was already getting ready for the for the next one. Then sparring session, there I re injured the same rib, and it's like, wow, man, why is this happening? But Right now, you know, I'm just thankful to God and I'm very happy that I'm physically and mentally ready for this, man. I'm just excited to go back in there. I'm practically practically, practically fighting in my backyard from my hometown. You know, it's like uh, I was born in Nogales, Sonora, but I was I lived in Tucson, Arizona when I was a little kid. You know, I did my elementary school there. So all the Phoenix area, Glendale, Tucson, they're all going to be there. My family there and all Sonora, my family. And from also not going to be here. So I'm very excited for this. And what better way, you know, that to expect the fireworks. Every time you got two Mexican fighters in there, man, we just fireworks. Vaquero style is a perfect style for me and him to adapt for, to give the fans what they want. Because my biggest thing is to win. I just want to win. But also if I can give them a, what the fans, what they want, a good fight, you know, a, a war, then that's my type of fight, man, you know. I it was many can see, you know, my I had a lot of trouble fighting Shakur Stevenson. You know, it wasn't a fan fan favorite a style. You know, Shakur was a better fighter, obviously, but uh, you know, it was just uh, disappointed that I lost him. Disappointed that you know it wasn't a, uh, uh, an exciting fight for the fans, at least I think. So I think this style is perfect for the fans to enjoy. Um, you know, I think the styles make fights, and this one's gonna be a good one. Yeah, this feels like. Per, a perfect match, right? Made in boxing, hardcore heaven, not to put too many expectations on you, but we know the excitement potential here, but you mentioned the Shakur Stevenson experience right there. And look, you bounced back very nicely in your rematch with Lopez. How much though, is that a real process to go through off a big defeat? Because, you know, you can feel invincible for a long time and that can fuel your confidence, but when you have to really reset internally, how difficult is that process? It was difficult, you know, and the reason why it was so difficult because, uh, you know, you, you work so hard, you know, I, I work so hard, you know, you do every, when, when you, you're taught in life that when you do everything right, when you wake up early, you sacrifice, you do your training, you do your time and you, everything, you do it perfectly. Life has taught me that things are going to go fine. You're, you're supposed to win because you're doing everything perfect. If you're getting out of hand, if you lose a little bit of discipline, it is known that you're not going to be successful. But if you do everything right, things should go right. That's what I did, man. Dude, I've been doing this my whole career. And then it got to a day where I did everything right as well. I went to camp, fight, discipline like always. I go to a fight and, and, and expecting to win. And being in the ring with Shakur was just uh, very disappointing. It was disappointing when I when I when, when the last bell rung, I was like, man, I can't believe that I lost this fight. You can't I worked so hard. What happened? You know, and, and it's like sometimes you just, so as fighters, you know, it's very hard to accept the fact that the fighter we got in front of us is just simply better than you. That was a tough pill to swallow for me because us fighters, you know, we got egos. We got egos as far as yeah. we train so hard and we claim to be the best and we want to believe we're, we're the best. And that night, that wasn't the case. You know, Shakur was clearly the better man. And he's like, I just had to accept it. A lot of things were going to my mind that night, you know, Obviously, a very sad moment for me and my family and my father, and then back with the wife. And, you know, I was just going through some rough times for, for just a couple of days to, you know, I look back and I say, you know what? Forget this. You know, I lost, you know, I get back up and, you know, come on, come strong. So that's in the past right now. You know, I'm trying to, now there's Shakur's out of the picture at 130. You know, it's just, it's a perfect time for me to show that now I'm the king of 130. But for me to do that, you know, I got to first face the, the champion, who the champion is Vaquero Navarrete. So right now, I'm just um, I leave that in the past, use that as a learning experience. Maybe I lost to Shakur Stevenson, but you know, you, you that's that's part of life. You know, you can't always win. 
you get back up and you, you work hard and you try to climb back on the top. And that's what we're going to do this um, August 12th. We're ready, yeah, we're no, ready to, to win. I appreciate your introspection there. You're, you're a proud man, but a true competitor. And you, you got back to business and you handled it. Now you've got, I think, I mean, you present, I believe, the toughest challenge for Navarrete's great career. And I say great because, I mean, it feels like he fights every three months and it feels like the title defenses just, just added up. When You've had to see a fight like this coming in the distance. What about Navarrete's game do you respect the most? Well, there's two things after seeing him, seeing him fight. You know, the first time that I seen him, that I seen him personally fight when he, when he became a three-time division champion, I noticed two things. He's not invincible. There's a lot of fighters out there. Where we, you know, and all fighters out there, they're not invincible, especially back in the He got sent to the canvas. I saw him get sent to, to the canvas, and it's like, wow, he, he, he's, he can be sent down. That's one version. The other version is he does, he does get back up. He does have a heart. He is a warrior because he got sent to the canvas. He was hurt, but he, he sucked it up, got back up, and he showed a lot of heart, and he really showed that he can knock out his opponent as well. So I'd rather be prepared for number two, for the second thing, the second thing that I observed that it's not going to be an easy fight, that, that even though you, cause you might send him to a canvas, he's still going to get back up. He's going to fight with his heart out, and he's going to do whatever it takes to win the fight. You can't count this guy out in any moment. So I gotta be in my A game since round first to to the last round round twelve. So that's two things that I noticed that he this guy you know he, he's invisible he's not invisible, but also you know you gotta be careful because he he, he won't give up. That's what I'm trying. To he's no in won't. But right now, just I'm preparing myself for the best version that I know about. I can't remember that he's that warrior can come forward and throw some different angles. So. I think me and Eddie are doing the perfect game plan as far as we don't have to run to be defensive. We can be in there. We just got to be the smarter brawler in there because this fight, I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, is going to come down to who's, who's the biggest, who's a bigger warrior, you know, inside the ring. So we're just being focused on that. It's training smart. We're going to be the smarter brawler inside the ring. Well, it's interesting that you said be the smarter brawler because that's that would have answered my next question on the idea of like when to know when to be the action star and the, you know, and the brawler or when to be the two-time Olympian that you are. I mean, is it, is it matchup dependent on how you balance the, the, you know, the pure boxing with the come forward or, or is it just sort of like, that's who you are. It all weaves together the whole time. Um, it all depends on what with in front and what he brings to the table. Cause you never know his also his game plan. You never know. So, a lot of times if I'm going up against a fighter who hits very hard, well, maybe I have to move a little bit more. But it all depends on, on the fighter, what he brings to the table. And that's why the first round is so important because we're testing the waters. What's he got? What he has? What What is he? What is their intentions? Is he, he going to try to dig to the body? Is he not? But most of the times, you know, we all have a game plan. We all, and it, it's happened. And I only say it because it's happened to me before. You know, against other fighters where I know they're, they're, they're a little bit my size and, you know, I can maybe I'll box them. And the, the game plan was to work our jab on the outside, stick the right hand, move around the ring, because we can do that. Because I learned, I learned, a lot, I have a lot of amateur background that, that I know how to box as well. But then you get hit to the face, and then you hit them in the back, and then the crowd goes crazy. And they go, We got Mexico, and then you got people cheering. Go, and then the, the, the game plan just goes out the window. I was like, forget <laughs> it. Let's, let's go, let's duke it out and see who's the best one. And that's, one of my favorite styles to do, you know, obviously I don't like getting hit, but, you know, sometimes you're in there, man, you're not feeling the shots, you're landing your shots and the fans are, are hyped up. And, and that's, I, I, I honestly have to say, that's one of the best feelings out there that you know, the fans being hyped up and, and you giving the fans what they want. You got to remember, man, I grew up in the era of Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. Those two guys inspire me like none other, none other. And I've told this to them personally. Like, you guys don't know what you guys did. You guys inspired me to be the, the fighter that I am today. Because I can, I can box. I can, I can change softball, jab, move, and I've shown it. I've shown it before. But man, I, I was just inspired by these two fighters that makes me want to fight just like them. Not imitate their style, but imitate their, their energy inside the ring and imitate sure. their way of fighting, the way they inspired. I want to inspire the new generation the way they inspired me. So. So, like I said, the game plan might be one thing, but then it all goes out the window. But the most important thing for me is obviously is winning. If I have to box, it's going to come to me and we have to do a box. But, like I said, style make fighting. I don't see this, this style 
being boring. I don't see this fight being boring. I see this fight as something that could be very uh, ma a magical night for boxing. Well, I, I love to ask great action stars in boxing who their influences are. It's like asking a musician, which, you know, who'd you have in your record collection? And you mentioned Morales there. Is that, was it an era or a single fight that, that bit you? I mean, sometimes it's, it's as easy as being a kid turning on the TV, seeing that one seminal moment. And you're like, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Was there ever a single fight that had that effect on you? But I, I, can't, I cannot say it was a single fight because it was all their fight, all their careers, you know, when they, when they fought together, you know, it was, uh, it was very divided. You know, Mexico was 50% Barrera, 50% Morales. And I've got to honestly say, I was a team Morales fan, you know, and I've said this personally to Barrera because I feel bad, you know, because he's such a great guy to me. He's a great, he's become a great friend, a great mentor as far as boxing. And I got to be honest with you, Barrera, you know, I, I, I tell him, you know, I was cheering for, but he's, oh, don't worry, you know, I was just a kid, but, you know, it turns out that during life, you know, I was a little bit more closer. I'm closer to Herrera than I am to Eddie Morales, but Eddie Morales is still a cool person. But during that, that era, you know, I, I would, when they were fight, I was team Morales. But when they were both fight different ways, you know, I was a big fan of uh, Marco, Toro, uh, uh, Marco Toro Barrera as well. Whoever he would fight, I was a big follower of him. When he fought uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, I was rooting for Marco Toro Barrera. So, those two guys just influenced a lot of my career. You know, seeing seeing uh, the fact that Eddie Morales beat Manny Pacquiao was was one of the greatest nights for me in boxing. <laughs> and seeing Marco Antonio Barrera do, do those great fights and then beating him the third time when he beat Eddie Morales. I'm a, I'm a student of the game, man. I, I like studying boxing. I love seeing old films. You know, I go way back, you know, you know I try to study from Sugar Ray Leonard to Roberto Duran to you know, from all those, all those styles or Willie Pep uh, and Salvador Sanchez, you know, always try to study boxing, you know. Like, well, I got to ask you, because you, 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 you know, you can, you could, you could have just said Barrera and, Mor and Morales, we would have known what you were talking about, but you did mention the first Morales Pacquiao fight, 2005, well, you're probably a teenager, you love boxing, and then you watch El Terrible go southpaw in round 10, 12, <laughs> Just because he has giant wavos, I know what at that moment, that three minutes did to me as a fan. What does right. that do to you, who well, you know, aspiring boxer? I remember that like if it was yesterday. I swear, I remember that like if it was yesterday. I remember screaming at the TV with the top of my lungs with my father. I said, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Pacquiao's a monster. He's gonna knock you out." And then he actually got hit with a with a the left. Right, and left left the shot that Pacquiao throws, and he kind of stumbled for a moment, and then my heart almost drops, and. It was just, um, like I said before, man, these good Eric Morales and Marco Toro Barrera. I know I've told them to them, I've told this to them, but I feel like they don't really get it, what, how much they inspired me. They inspired yeah. me a lot. And, and all those fights, man, it's just, I'm real, very grateful to have those. So, so a, lot, a lot of those fights are the reason why I fight this way. They're the reason why I look up, look, looking forward to fight always a, a Mexican, because you need a dancey partner to have those. Okay. I'm glad you just said you need a dancing partner because here was going to be my next question. You've been in some great action fights. I mean, I try to remind everybody who hasn't seen the Scott Quigg fight. And obviously your knockout against Burchelt was just, you know, one of the classic moments of this era. But you don't have the Gotti to your ward yet. You don't have the Barrera to your Morales, the magic to your bird, whatever. Are you looking? Are you actively looking for that man? Yeah, of course we're looking for it, man, because, uh, you know, there's some fights that are just different styles. It doesn't make, you know, you know, I would have loved it to be Shakur Stevenson, but just his style is just way different than my style. It doesn't adapt for a good fight. So, you know, we're, everybody was expecting the Brichette one to be, uh, 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 so it turned out to be my style, which just fits perfect for me to, to win that style. And we haven't found a, a, a dancing partner. Maybe this could be the case. Maybe this could be the case, you know, and, and, and you know, a lot of times, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I always kept on saying, I used to tell my father, I want a war. I want a war. When I was 15 and 16, I was a man. One day I'm going to have a war. Till then, I end up having a war. You know, I end up having a war against, you know, Miguel Mariana, then uh, Genesis Arbania, then Scott Quay. Then it was like, wow, man, man, do I, am I sure I really want these wars? <laughs> but it's like, it's true because, um, you know, when I go to the streets, I'm walking back home in Mexico and Hermosillo, and then you go everywhere around the world and, you hear people walk up to you and say, hey, I remember that one fight when you fought 
you fought Scott Quigg, your jaw was broken. It's like, oh, wow. But, you know, for, you forget these fights. They're not constantly in your mind. And it's like, you relive those moments. And it's very, it's a very special moment to see the fans enjoying that with you. So it's like, yeah, those wars are, are worth it. Those wars are worth it. And, and if I can have a dancing partner to have a, a trilogy, like, 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 like Marco Antonio Barrera and, and Barrera and uh, Marco Antonio Barrera and Morales or, or Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao, yeah. you know, Vasquez Marquez, right? Vasquez Marquez, another great trilogy. You know, so, so it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, it's worth it. At the end of the day, the, the recognition of the people coming up to you and, and just appreciating it and having the same feeling that I have when, when every time I see Eric Morales, I'm going to Barrera. Sure. When I see people walk up to me like that and tell me, you know, my son was very happy to see this, you know, or when a small fighter comes up to me and says, hey, man, you're my idol. I was like, I'm your idol? Like, wow, man, I can't, can't believe that. You know, was, but, I got to say, it. every time I see Eric Morales, too, I do the same thing. I go up to him. I say, huevos, thank you. I just try to express <laughs> the love, man. It, yeah. It's it's a it's a. I don't know. I mean, there's so much inspiration as a fan within this sport and it's the courage that you guys fight for. And that's, I guess, what makes this August 12th fight special world title at stake against Navarrete huge for your career, but it does seem you're both committed to, to do what you do best, which is get in there and go after it. Uh, ESPN, ESPN plus get ready. Glendale, Arizona banger coming your way. Final question here, Oscar. And I really appreciate the, the, the time and effort you put into these answers. Uh, what are we going to, what should we expect then? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, can you run through him like you did Burchell or, or it, do you feel like this could be flip the coin at the end of the day? Who was the better man? I would say if, if flip the coin, say who's the better man. It's because um, I never, you know, and I learned this from an old coach who passed away a couple of years ago. You know, it's my, uh, my coach from the Olympic center, went to Olympics in, in 2008, 2012, Professor Bonilla. He told me once, don't ever promise the people a knockout. Don't ever promise them a fight of a year. Don't ever promise them nothing. What you can promise and what I always promise is give it your 100%. So that's all something that I always say. Every time I say, I won't promise you a knockout, I won't promise you a fight of the year, I won't promise you a, a trilogy, but I will promise you this. I will fight with my heart. I will fight with my heart out and give everything I got inside the ring. So just people know that every time I'm in the ring, you can see me giving my 100% no matter what. Hey, one of these days, you know, 20 years from now, someone's going to come up and shake your hand and say, hey, remember that Navarrete fight? Way most, <laughs> my friend. Hey, great work, yeah. Oscar. We wish you well uh, on this fight and everything in your personal life. Great chat with you ahead of August 12th. Thank you, man, brother. Have a, have a good one.